This is this is a, a, certainly a, a political question, and I'm not so good in in, in politics. For me, the, uh, the the movement of the Americans from away from Europe uh, to Asia is more uh, is more a kind of scaring a, a couple of people. I don't believe in that. Uh, the uh, uh, the U United States. Uh, must and will understand that uh, in the worldwide competition, the, their partners are Europe, is Israel. And if they choose uh, Europe, uh, they, uh, they will buy Russian with it, Russia with, uh, with this. Um, the, uh, uh, I mentioned the soup for Wales is thin. Um, the on the capability side, uh, I, do not, I do not see uh, major steps ahead. Uh, what I see is that uh, Europe is gathering more and more and will become a major pillar, an organized pillar within NATO. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, do you want to add? Uh, uh, yes, I, um, just to add a bit. Uh, certainly as far as the United Kingdom is concerned, bearing in mind that um, the summit is in Wales, which happens still to be part of the United Kingdom, <laughs> um, uh, that um, uh, the government is particularly keen to try and present the United Kingdom as still very much engaged uh, in Europe because there has been, and in NATO in particular, because there has been quite a lot of feeling that we ourselves have become more distant. Um, and uh, there is this issue I mentioned before of the choice for the United Kingdom between supporting America elsewhere in the world and its contribution to Europe. It seems to me that from the United States, our perception of the United States, it's not nothing to do with lack of interest or turning it back away. It's more a matter in the longer term of pure scale and where the crises are and what is left um, still to be uh, um, Europe. And this is the message that um, Europeans need to take on board in, um, in retaining and developing their own capabilities. Ricky, from the other side of the ocean? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that the, the, the priority and the demand of the warfighters for Europe is it's below CENTCOM, it's below PACOM, it's below NORTHCOM. It's so it, to the warfighters, it's not important. It's important, but not at the priority the other three uh, are. I think it's going to be more policy driven. It'll be. I know Romania is, is on schedule. Poland is going to be a debate, I think, inside U.S. Congress a little bit on that. Um, but but uh, that, that's where I think uh, we're headed. Thank you, gentlemen. Some additional questions? Yes, please. Thank you. So, who, who would like to start? You are more academic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's the case. Well, well clearly, the, 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 it's not just the Eurozone crisis, it's the, um, it's the crisis oh, wow. generally. The United Kingdom is not part of the Eurozone, but um, it's been hugely problematic, even, even where nations would like to sustain or develop their military capabilities. Uh, they've had to take uh, big cuts to the United Kingdom in the um, uh, 2010 Strategic Defence Review uh, had to do some things it really didn't want to do um, um, and, um, and, 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 uh, and had to do that. So, I mean, it, it was obviously uh, very significant. The particular issue of the United Kingdom and the Eurozone is another one um, and a different one. We have a referendum probably coming back up in, uh, in 2015 over membership of the European Union or changing our relationships. Um, my personal view in this, and I think that a, a lot of academics would agree with me, is that it makes absolutely no sense to walk away from our geostrategic environment in that sort of a way and to be a merely supplementary toy 
um, uh, on the fringes of the United States elsewhere in the world. We have responsibilities in some difficult places like um, the South Atlantic, but, but apart from that, um, <coughs> um, anyhow, Bernard. I think the, uh, the impact of the, uh, the economical crisis uh, is, uh, is uh, absolutely speculation and unforeseeable. But even regardless of this unforeseeable, what, what might happen, uh, Europe will remain the, uh, the most uh, powerful economical area on Earth, regardless what happens. And uh, there are still a few members, uh, a, f a few members who spend more than, than they should. And uh, currently, Germany is not really inclined to pay for this. Uh, um, and and uh, you never know for how long you, you can pay for that. So um, I, I would say uh, I would say this: the uh, the problems are worldwide. Um, it's for China, it's for for the U.S. But uh, um, uh, Europe will survive probably in the West matter. I mean, the, the predictions for um, economic growth, uh, obviously, between China at the top by 2035, 2050, whatever. But when you look at Europe as a whole, it's ex still extremely substantial, as you yes. say, yeah. hanging together. OK, last question. Okay, I have a last question. Um, since you friends are members, all of you are members from NATO countries, my question is how the cooperation between NATO and Israel can be increased? I am asking you personal views, of course, not the views of your country. Well, you, sp you spend most of your time in NATO and still in uh, I think uh, Israel is already pretty close to NATO. Uh, there are more than one committee where Israel is a, is a member or a hidden member. And uh, you, whenever you, it is necessary, you find a sponsor. Sponsor is necessary to be active in, in NATO. Um, nevertheless, uh, I, uh, um, and on the, on, the bilateral, uh, on the bilateral level, uh, as a German, I can say, uh, cannot go better, you know, and if I have heard, uh, I mean, the Chancellor was here with his cabinet, and when I have heard that uh, um, German uh, missions uh, around the world where, I, where, I, where you are not in place is taken over this, for a German, quite something which we wouldn't have imagined uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> so uh, I, I think you are on a good way, uh, you have good products, um, and uh, um, we will see. Uh, competition is, is, uh, is, is on. I, I think that one of the best things Israel does is their integration and interoperability with the U.S. military. There's no better nation in the world that can fight together and share intelligence and be able to do a, a scenario. That skill set alone is, is very valuable to give to our NATO partners who are, are right there trusting to be able to expand their capabilities in a true fight uh, as we go through. I also think the application of something as simple as, a, as an iron dome on a ship that, that we have in these issues now with, with ship protection inside the 60 mile range, that's another great uh, opportunity that Israel can offer the community uh, in terms of, of uh, increasing that, that, that capability, so just two things. Right. Yes, um, uh, 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 as, as Bernd and, and you have both said, there, there are the uh, bilateral relationships and uh, below the parapet, uh, um, very powerful relationships. I think one point is quite important, and that is that uh, as far as NATO is concerned, it is the bilateral and small group relationships, whether within NATO or outside NATO, that are what's so important to um, making NATO really useful. Um, uh, and, uh, um, and, and this is going to be increasingly important with the need for scale in um, managing the security of the world. That NATO needs important, reliable, and, and, and effective partners. And, uh, but it's a, it, it has sometimes to be a subtle way to maintain these and build these partnerships. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, with that we uh, finish our session with four different accents of English. And uh, please join me thanking our distinguished guests uh, from abroad for bringing us their views. Okay, Organization. החל מינואר 2012. מנהלת חומה מופקדת על הפיתוח והייצור של מערכות הגנה נגד טילים ורקטות של מדינת ישראל, ובעצם זה הלקוח שדובר עליו בפאנל של התעשיות. לפני מינויו כראש מנהלת חומה, יאיר שימש כסמנכ"ל שיווק של התעשייה האווירית, לפני כן היה מנהל מפעל מל"מ, זה שיואב תורג'ימן היה פה קודם, ועוד לפני כן יאיר היה מנהל תוכנית חץ בתעשייה אווירית מל"ם. יאיר בעל תואר BSC ו-MSC בהנדסה אווירונאוטית, שניהם מהטכניון, ויאיר הוא גם בעל תואר, קיבל פרס ביטחון ישראל בשנת 2003. יאיר, בבקשה. 